on today's show, your 365 music marketing plan. Q title sequence. 30 minute music marketing for musicians who want to get better at marketing their music. Hi, I'm Greg. Hello, I'm Sheldon, and this is 30 Minute Music Marketing, the show for independent artists and DIY musicians who want to get better at marketing their music. And hopefully that's you because you're watching this on the YouTubes or the Facebooks. You could be streaming it on a podcast platform of your choice. Give us a review if you're listening on Apple Podcasts. That helps other people find the show. And also write some questions and comments on the uh, YouTube channel and, yes, and our Facebook on, page. on the Facebook page because um, if you've got a question about maybe an upcoming <laughs> uh, topic you'd like us uh, to cover on a future show because that's what James Gray did. Uh, on Twitter uh, quite a while back asking us to uh, discuss a particular topic and that's what we're going to do today. All right, so, and so I just want to say thanks John Collier for your kind words and your nice little review. Feel free to put that on the uh, YouTube channel as well. The window to watch. Absolutely nobody will get that. Do you get that? No idea. No, it's a, it's a reference about a shop that used to exist in the 1970s. But How old I do you digress. think I am? Old enough. Not that old. You can edit that bit out. Right, so. So yeah, James got in contact with us and asked us if we could do a show on the tasks that DI musicians need to take, you know, on a day in day basis and what order. Now, because we are a marketing show, what I thought I'd do is I'd take his question and I'd twist it a little bit so we could discuss the tasks the DIY musicians in terms of marketing their music. How do they structure everything so that okay. the music marketing almost happens, I won't say by accident, but a plan to put in place so you don't necessarily need to think about what you're going to be doing to marketing your, their, their music. There's a plan put in place and by following that plan and executing that plan, it's structured so that you don't have to do too so much. It's almost like it becomes almost organic. It in becomes like a, a muscle. Process memory. Mm -hmm. So there's a little bit of planning that needs to be put into place, but what we're going to do is we're going to look at three sort of different time scales. Now normally whenever we're talking about music marketing, we like to talk about short, medium and long term sort of plans, but what I'm going to do is break it down into stuff we do on a daily basis, stuff we maybe do on a weekly basis, and stuff we might do maybe maybe on a quarterly basis. There's a bit of room for movement there, but we'll we'll discuss quarterly. that. Quarterly? You're going quarterly. that far? Wow. Yeah. That's going to be interesting. Okay, so. Go on then. Start at point one. Point one. Daily. The things that we do each and every day. You can probably guess that the stuff that we're most likely to, uh, to do to uh, market our music is the socials. Right. Social media channels. Yep. Now, I'm not going to necessarily delve into what you need to do on a day-to-day -day basis in terms of ideas for your social media channels, because we've covered that already. We have indeed. Can you, without looking at our notes, can you remember what episode that was? Don't look at the notes. <laughs> I can't remember. It was remember. episode two. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh yeah. 20, oh yeah. Of course, the twenty ideas for your social media channels. It's some, one, some good stuff in there. It's one of our most popular uh, uh, episodes. Oh, that's good. So, in fact, if you haven't watched this and you're watching this on YouTube, it'll be in the uh, the the link will be in the it'll comments. It'll be one of the other. Yes, I'll put the link in. But the idea uh, on top of those twenty ideas for your social media channels is in order that you're not necessarily spending too much time creating. The idea is that you document your day-to-day -day life as a DIY musician or as an, an, an aspiring sort of artist. And anything that you do that you believe fits into the, um, the what I would refer to as your personal branding, that's probably something that needs to go on the socials. So we discussed branding as well in an episode, an episode number I don't actually have written down <laughs> on my notes. But, I thought you were going to baffle me with your no, memory no, 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 capability. No, that, that would be me thinking too far ahead. But we talked about values yeah. in terms of the things that you like and the things that you stand for and the things that you might necessarily be against. And what it might be a good idea now, if you haven't done this already, sheet of A4 paper, line down the middle, things I like, things I dislike. And again, this might be collectively, if you're in a, a band or a, in a group of musicians. And try and identify the things that you are for, the things that you are against. And as you're going about your daily life as a, you know, as a musician, or there's any aspect of your personal life, if there's something 
that crops up which is listed in that list of for and against. Basically, that means, all oh, right, well, this is something that would re help to reinforce my particular brand by advising and telling people about this particular aspect of my life or band ethos that I am for or against. And that's how you constantly reinforce your brand. So it's almost like your, your, your brand values is your filter for social media. For example, uh, I went to a lovely little cafe on the, uh, the outskirts of Bolton. Uh, this week, and I had it's quite a chore. In fact, complicated. We okay. were, were going to the cinema as well. Oh, day, right. day out with the missus. Right. Okay. And I had a um, I had a lovely smashed avocado sandwich with uh, with with chili jam, and there was all sorts of you know healthy sprouts on there. Now, in terms of my band's brand values, that's that's nothing to do with my band's brand values. So I didn't I didn't tweet or Insta anything about that. However, when I go to the pub. On a, on a Thursday night, right, I see where you're coming from, and now. I have a nice, uh, a nice pint of beer because my band sings about beer and all those sorts of things. Brand values tick; that means it goes on the socials. So that's that's one way it's of it's helping you it. relate content for content. It's helping you reinforce to your audience: here's the things that I like and I want to be known for, and that means basically if that if it. If it assimilates and marries up with your brand values, it goes on the socials. If it doesn't, so then, it won't. If the, on that basis, considering the diet that we eat on tour is so healthy, mm. how come we didn't? Because you and I both commented that the food that we had in Lancaster on Saturday was pretty much the best food we had on tour. It was utterly delicious. Hello to Dominic's of Lancaster. Honestly, they served a burger in a box. It was amazing. A luxury box. It was. What's your point again, sorry? No, I was just saying that. You right. know, did you tweet about that? Because uh, I was, I was that busy. food was more was, in relation to the band. I was too band. busy eating it. Yes. So, so again, uh, anything that in terms of your daily life, if you come across something that ties in or reinforces or tells people about your particular brand values, get it on your socials. Okay, so you're going to now talk about the, cons the frequency on Twitter. Right, yes. So the, the thing with Twitter is in terms of how that algorithm works. The best time for you to get the, the biggest audience will be when people are actually available and surfing and scrolling through their news feed. So what tends to happen is breakfast or any time before the main business of the day. So people will be starting work, they'll be starting college, university, whatever, life happens normally yeah. between the hours of approximately 9 till 12 or 9 till 1. So it's a good idea to get your tweet out before then because it'll reach a, a potentially a big audience. On the commute, yep. commuters and uh, stuff Lunch like time, so as soon as people down tools, the first thing they will do is they will get their phone out, switch it on, scroll through their news feed. So anything round about lunch time is, will, be, uh, will, will get a big audience. And similarly, once people finish work, the first thing they will do on their way home from their commute is get the phone out and as they sit on the train that's how they will keep themselves occupied so again you've got the biggest potential audience in the evenings that probably goes as well with uh, with the way that the, the Facebook algorithm works so when people have downtime that's when it's a good time for you to post on the Twitters okay so uh, Instagram frequency of posts in terms of your main news feed about once a day is fine in terms of your stories you can hammer your stories as often as you the, like. Um, when you say Instagram, one post a day, are we talking a photo, a video, or Whatever both? is, you know, they, they statistically they reckon video is more engaging. But again, I'm, I'm trying not to get too too bogged down with the, with the, the this, specifics. The, with the specifics, okay. but in, to, in terms of, you know, if you're wondering mm. what, like, so for, for example, these are probably the, the minimum at times you need to post today, but I think I think statistically once a day is fine in terms of your actual sort of news feed. But with your stories, you can update those as long as you've got appropriate content as many times as you like. Go on, Facebook. Facebook. Go on. Go on. Facebook. There was a time when I would update my uh, band's Facebook profile once a day. The way that the Facebook algorithm works in that it only shows your posts to all your uh, your Facebook followers if there's a good amount of engagement on that post. So generally what tends to happen is if you're posting something every single day, 
in terms of trying to get a, a frequency of Possibly pulse. Possibly watering down your effectiveness. That's a very good way of potting it. And if you do that, then people aren't necessarily going to see it. So what I try and do is I try and hold back and make sure if I'm posting anything on Facebook, it's a piece of killer content that most people will try and engage with so it will get the, the widest possible audience. So between three and four times a week is, is roughly the, the frequency of posting that I... In terms of just looking at that as a list of, uh, of frequency for three types of social media, that's not as many times as I thought it was going to be, to be honest. No, no not necessarily. And that seems a lot more manageable. Yeah, and, and like I say, once you approach it from the aspect of yourself uh, almost like a, as a reality sort of TV show, yeah. rather than trying to create stuff to, to, to put on there, if you can document aspects of your life, which correspond to your your branding and your ethos. Obviously, you know, if you can sit down and, and play and play the piano or something and record that, that's brilliant. But if you're trying to bring aspects of your own life to to the fore and to the attention of other people, and if by doing so you're helping to strengthen your brand and trying to more clearly communicate to your audience the sort of person that you are and the reason why you're doing this and your your day to day life both. Maybe as a you know as as an aspiring musician or you just as a normal person, mm. then uh, that's the way to do it. And like, like you say, it shouldn't necessarily be too much of a bind because there should be plenty of stuff going on there. Yeah. Okay. So that's daily. That's day to day. So let's move on in terms of a time frame and think about weekly. weekly. So what I try and do in terms of my band's um, social media accounts and various aspects of marketing is try and have one piece of featured content each and every week. So almost like something that my audience would specifically want to, if we're using a TV analogy, sort of like tuning for, in the way that people have their favorite TV program on that might be on every right, week. Right, okay. Game of Thrones. So in other words, you they top, top Gear, you and Cars, here we go again. So people, you know, will, will have um, almost what they refer to or as appointment television, if, if we're continuing that, that TV analogy. So rather than just in terms of the daily stuff, that's almost the flotsam and jetsam. It's the, you know, the, the transient stuff, stuff that's maybe not necessarily meant to be that particularly meaningful. Try and give your audience a little bit of a nugget that they will really appreciate and they will really look forward to and they will really enjoy watching or listening or consuming in, in whatever way. So here's some examples that you might be able to do in terms of this weekly piece of featured content. So you could live stream some sort of Acoustic performance. Yep. If your you know if your uh, if your music fits in with uh, being played acoustically. But then again, I think even bands that whose music doesn't necessarily immediately think of acoustically. I remember when Raya, who were kind of like a Nine Inch Nails Tool style band, did an acoustic performance, and it was awesome. It was just so so different. They spent a little bit of time, but for content, it was great just to see it performed in a different way. So. It doesn't always have to be acoustic. No. So you could also have a pre-recorded band performance. So if you're performing live, you could go out and get that sort of captured, or you could use. I've, have you done that before? I've done that before. I've done that many times before. Or you could use a facility like Greg has, and you have bands and artists come in here, and you do like a multi-track recording and a multi-camera recording, yep. and just basically film a live video performance. And then premiere. MP3, yeah, MP3 file. MP4, MP4. sorry. I beg your pardon, getting my formats right. And yet you can premiere that on a variety of uh, channels all at the same time. You could live stream some sort of uh, Q&A or band chat with your audience. Uh, you could have a brand related show or feature. So the thing is, you uh, as an artist, or you collectively as a band, you'll, you'll have you know, specific sort of interests, again, going back to your brand values, and those interests you will probably find, some yeah. of them will resonate with your audience. So in other words, what are you and your fans into? So it could be, very simply, the genre of music that you play. It could be jazz, it could be country music. Our good friend Donna, she's, she's big yeah. on country, so she, you know, she could have some sort of country music show where she you know she uh, has a look at the, uh, the the latest that would be a good idea country music Donna, do hits that. of the day so obviously you now donna 
Um, so, for example, right, you like you, you like sneakers, as our American cousins would say. You like training shoes. And it training could well, shoes. Training yes, shoes. I like kicks. Yes, I do. Right. Okay. So, but it could well be that if you're a, if you're an artist. Uh, so, it, so, for example, you could be a rapper who's really into trainers, and it could well be that your audience, who are lots of people like you, they're also into trainers. So you could do, uh, yeah. you know, a 10, 15 It doesn't show. always have to be something musical. It doesn't have to be something a musical. Uh, you could be, you could be into, I don't know, Doctor Who or the MCU, and if your audience are into that, you could do a little show about that. Um, me and my band were into crisps. <laughs> and as daft as it may seem, we, we we eat crisps and we sort of review crisps and all sorts of so so whatever and what you might potentially have to do is do a variety of different things to see which catches on best with your audience. But and um, didn't you once do a Jaffa cake challenge and you've never been some, able to eat a Jaffa cake since? We did some eating challenges as well. That was a that was a long time ago. That was two years ago. I, I, I've, st I've, I've never had a Jaffa cake <laughs> since. Um, but you can, um, another another thing could be is um, your mailing list. Send your mailing list out once a month, and rather than it just be a spammy old oh, stream my music here's a load of uh, a, a list of upcoming shows. What you could do is you could tell somebody a particular story. So you could, within the, the, the confines of this uh, uh, mailing list, you could tell somebody, you tell your audience about the, the, your best ever gig, your worst ever gig. You could let people uh, know some inside information about your songwriting process, your, um, your biggest song, how did you, how, you know, what were the circumstances uh, that made you write that particular song? So a, a nice little one-to-one -one communicate and a message. And the thing is, all these individual ideas, you could do one on the first week of the month, one on the second week of the yeah. month, do your podcast on the third week of the month, send out your mailing list on the fourth week of the month. And once you get into a bit of a routine, then you're only doing one big thing per week. Yeah. And it becomes a fairly easy process once the routine is up and running to keep that up and to keep up this content and keep putting out content on a on a weekly on a weekly basis. Cool. That sounds good. And what we have to remember now is that you are no longer just musicians. You are a media company. You're creating media for your audience. So back in the old days, it just used to be you put out music, your audience listened to that music, and that was the end of it now. But everyone's expectations of mm. artists are so much higher yeah. that people want more than just music. And you know, that's how you, know, you can potentially keep it. If you're only releasing a single once every six months, then you're not necessarily engaging your audience quite strongly. Yeah. If you can do this on a, on a weekly basis, yeah. then you're bringing them closer to you. You're, there, you know, you're, you're creating a stronger bond between yourself and your audience because you're giving them something that they will value and you're doing it each and every week. So getting back to the comparison of being a media company, yep. the example I always throw in here is, is Red Bull. So Red Bull are a company that make uh, caffeinated fizzy soft drinks. But they don't just make soft drinks, do they? They have uh, TV programs where they have people diving. Doing extreme things. Extreme things. Really extreme things. Reinforcing the brand. So they do diving. They have that, what's that plane thing called that they, they have? Um, aerial stunt. Aerial stunt. Aerial that, that's like a TV show. And they have the, uh, what's, the what's the race, the, the thing, your boxcar racing? Yeah, they do that. They do mountain biking. They do skateboarding. So, you know, as you go through your TV grind, uh, at least once a week, you will probably come across they some sort of, sort on of whatever channel, that they, uh, some sort of Red Bull programme. So well, they have a Formula One team as well. Yeah, so that's, but they're specific. And they sponsored Donny, Danny Mus uh, McGaskill, who's a trials rider. Isn't very good. A, isn't he a TV weatherman? I don't know. Very, very niche reference there. So, With your niche references. But, rather than just being a company that makes soft drinks, what they're doing is they're creating media to you know, reinforce their brand. 
and obviously they're doing it in a much more sort of roundabout way, perhaps yeah. than than you would as a, as a as a DIY or independent artist. But it, you know, it, it's along sort of similar lines. You, you're creating content for your audience to enjoy and to appreciate, to let them get you know let it know a little bit more about you and like you more in the process. And that's how it's done. To go from a, a fizzy drink to a Formula One team, though, is a little bit bizarre. But, you know, it's, it's trying to instill the excitement mm. of, uh, you know, of that particular sport into the brand. You know, the, the closeness, the association of the two products. One is supposed to wash off on the other. So, taking that brand idea, you've now moved on to quarterly. Yes. Now, it, Tell me about that. So, your music releases. Now, in an ideal world, it would be great if you could release a single every quarter, once every three months. Now, I appreciate that you know, a lot of people maybe in terms of the, you know, the, their schedule and the amount of money they have and maybe the, the time they have, that's the, maybe not necessarily yeah. possible. So maybe only three times a year. But let's work with the theoretical basis that if you can release a single once every quarter, once every sort of three months, that is another sort of item in terms of your, your yearly calendar to aim for and to build marketing around. And as you as you write the song, as you rehearse the song, as you go into the studio for the song, as you record the video for the song, all those are opportunities for you to be recording and documenting, there's that word again, documenting oh, your I, activities. I'm amazed that bands don't do this. It's like you would think it would be the first thing that they would do, but they still seem l reluctant. It's funny, when we were growing up, and when we were doing something, we were constantly getting our parents, our guardians, and dragging them along, saying, "Come and look at this! Come and look at this! What yeah. I'm doing!" And as we grow up, we we tend to we tend to ask to be left alone. To oh no, you can't see you can't see what I'm necessarily doing. And like, here's the finished product. So it's like it's a bit it's a bit late now. Is, is is this all you've got? Just just the one song? And there's all these opportunities along the way whereby you could be recording what you're doing and creating content either for use at that particular moment to try and, you know, almost like diary forward and signal forward that this uh, particular song is in the process of being created and it's going to be revealed at some point in the future or you could use it for content uh, that you could use around the time of release in order to try and focus everyone's attention upon the release date. And in addition to that, you've got lots of opportunities in terms of, I'll, I'll use air quotes for sort of music videos. So you've got cover art videos, which is just the cover of your release yeah. with, with a music track. Those don't necessarily work on Facebook for YouTube. They're brilliant. Got, Tunes to Tube works very well for it that. It does indeed. Uh, you've got lyrics videos. Yep. You've got... Didn't you do a lyric video this week, or no, a week ago, of a live performance? It is a combination of lyric video and live performance. Somebody pointed something out the other day, because yes. I showed them, and I don't know if it's more out of circumstance than anything else. Carry on. They said it seems to be better when the lyrics are above the subject rather than underneath. Oh. They said it's a lot, lot easier to read than trying to read lyrics across someone's midsection. Well, that was more... Or is that just due to the fact that, that we had a, a due gap? To, due to the framing, and we right. had a gap above the singer's head and the band's head. But, but they, they, they quite like that. So, yeah. and to be honest, you didn't... Although we've done lyric videos before using um, After Effects, which does take quite a long time, you just did this quite straightforward in Final Cut, and how long did yeah. it take you to do? 90 minutes. Yeah, and, and it, it really does add something to what might be a fairly static performance. Mm. It? Yes, it, it adds extra interest mm. if you've got a static one camera shoot. Yeah. So, yeah, so you've got cover art videos, lyric videos, the actual music promo itself. You could have a stripped down acoustic performance, and they're all opportunities that you can use you know, at, around the release date in order to concentrate people's attention and in order for you know you to let your audience know that your uh, that your music's out and the coming back to something we have discussed before and I know it says there about 80 20 in terms of like you know the, the Don't give the game away. No, no, I know, but <laughs> it was like, you know, I think we've we discussed this before is that too many people seem to think that every piece of content has to be amazing and the downside to that is that everything becomes an advert yeah, if you're doing, so if, if people can clearly see, for example, let's, let's go back to the, a, a lot of stuff th that my band does. If we're doing a feature on crisps, then it's very clear that this is not 
an effort <clears throat> and not an attempt to get people to to like our music and to try and sort of sell ourselves. It's an opportunity for people to spend eight minutes in the pleasure of our company, getting to know us more right, yeah. as people and as individuals rather than performers. And when you think about and this is to the to the people at home. When you think about your favourite artists, especially when you were sort of growing up, the the one thing you latched on it is not just to the, the band as a whole, if, we, if we're talking bands, but the individual people within that band and their own individual personalities. Mm. And you had particularly maybe favourite members of that band, and you know, th that's what a lot of this content is is about. It's showing who you are as a, as a real person rather than just as a performer and that's generally what we tend to to latch mm. on that that's what makes the difference between a band or an artist that you'll really necessarily like and just a song in a, in a, in a playlist and i think you're gonna cringe when i say this but Carry on. um in terms of i think that's one of the things i've been a big fan of bt for a long time again. but for, for, for those of you taking the uh, doing the drinking game at home you can you now take a drink. Now he's now he's mentioned BT. There we go. But in terms of getting to know him as a person through his social medias, I mean, I think it was yesterday he was put some footage up just of uh, a sound check of the gig that he was doing mm. that night. Yeah. And it, it does make it builds a stronger connection. And you know, you at uh, it just makes you want to get more involved. So you know, I was I was a big fan before, but I'm a bigger fan now. Because, you know, you have an inlet into their world and you get an idea of what, how they tick. Yeah. So, obviously, each one of these releases will be accompanied by a, a marketing plan and a marketing budget to make sure that it, that, it reaches that, that a word. new audience. Budget. A little bit of money behind it. So, you did... I know we're just slightly digressing, but... Carry on. You, you did this, the, the video that we talked about a few moments ago regarding the live performance and the lyrics. You put a little bit of money behind a that? A little bit of money behind that. Um, and the music video that I released the week before, I put a little bit of money behind that. And I'm constantly... But, obviously, these aren't sort of big... Sing, you know, these aren't big new single releases. If I create... You know, if, if we were to be releasing a, a new album, which we will be doing shortly, and we had a single, I'd, I'd probably put an extra zero on the end of what I'm spending at the moment. But I'm just... <coughs> constantly chipping away and trying to find a new audience with with these you know the, these existing well, pre-recorded uh, the, live performances the video that's already had over like 8000 views and i don't even know what the reach is because obviously i won't see that yeah. but it's already had you know a, from something that you're already doing anyway which i thought was pretty cool so if holistically we're trying to look at all these activities and putting in Pareto's law, i would probably say that 80% of your time on on a day-to-day -day or a weekly basis is concentrated on trying to build a relationship and deepen that relationship and engage uh, your existing audience. And maybe 20%, if we're looking at the, the, the new single releases and the stuff that you're doing on a quarterly or sort of half yearly basis, or whatever, 20% of your time is probably taken up with the, the music that you're creating. And I've always thought that singles are an opportunity. They're not really meant, I don't think, for your existing audience. They're an outreach opportunity yeah. i think singles are, 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 are uh, another form of merch another form of um it, it's almost like a flyer as in mm. this is us this is new uh, you might not have heard of us before here's what we do but so so 80 percent of your time is really engaging with the people who already know and like you 20 percent of your time is dedicated to trying to attract and tap into a new audience but I think in terms of the amount of money that you spend overall in terms of your marketing and your marketing budget, I think 80% of your money is spent on trying to attract that new audience with your singles. And obviously you've got your recording costs and maybe your video costs and then your, maybe your, your Facebook ad and your Instagram ad costs. And I think 80% of your costs goes into trying to find this new audience. Yeah. And 20% of the costs may well be in order to the expenses that you incur trying to create the content to keep your audience. So it's 80% of your time to your existing audience, 20% to finding a new audience, but 80% of your money goes into 20% of that time. Right. If that makes any sense. That makes sense. So, and, and you know, 
time is money to uh, complicate the uh, the analogy and but, but but that's what I'm saying so so the thing is once you've got somebody's attention once somebody has liked you and given you their permission to send them content through Twitter or, or Facebook or Instagram that's really who you need to be concentrating on because you've already done the hard work yeah so you spend 80% of the time trying to deepen that relationship so eventually that particular person is not only going to stream your track but will buy your t-shirt when it comes online and will come to see you when you do a show in their area so Lots of quite useful information. Lots there, and lots of things. Yeah. So, and, and the thing is, it does potentially take, especially with this weekly content, it does take a while to try and get that machine in place so that you but, sort of know what's happening and have put a, the time in to create I, all these weekly things. I so, I think that's a lot. It doesn't sound as daunting now. No. And the thing is, if you're doing anything live, so say you're doing some sort of uh, Facebook Live or Instagram Live, in terms of the preparation time, you might spend a couple of minutes going right. What we're specifically going to talk about, but other than that, you don't require any additional mm. prep. Bang, you go live. That's it. You <clears throat> spend as long as you need to on that particular broadcast. Bang, there you go. And that's your big thing for the week done. Okay, so that is today's show. Yes, I hope you found that useful. And the thing is, what would be In comments? What would be really good is if you undertake this particular uh, plan of action. I wonder whether it would be beneficial for, in terms of my notes to try and create some sort of sheet that somebody could download yeah. and print out. You could do that. I can what, put that on the website you as a PDF. On. Yeah, and you could you link to it. What a great idea. We'll do that then. And um, uh, on my uh, Facebook page, I can, uh, I can put a particular link up as well. That would be good. Cool. So the great thing is, if you could use that maybe yeah. as a as a plan, and maybe in three, four months' time, report back and tell us how you're uh, how you're finding it. Great. Well, that would be very good. Thanks for watching. Cheers, and uh, no, as listening. I say, um, give us a rating on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. Hit that bell. Leave us a comment if there's anything you'd like us to discuss on a future show, uh, a particular topic you want us to uh, to mull over and give us uh, the benefit of our, of our advice. Just stick a comment somewhere down here, and we will do our very best to answer your question in a future show. Thanks very much. Until next time, see you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.